I'm Allison, and welcome to my certified wildlife friendly backyard. I would like to show you some of the simple things I've incorporated in my own practices that have made it easier for wildlife to utilize my space and for me to enjoy it as well. We're going to be walking through the National Wildlife Federation's checklist for certification. Now looking at the list all at once, it can look really intimidating. It's a lot of practices that looks like you have to incorporate. But just by adding one or two things from each category can get your yard in tip-top shape for neighborhood wildlife. What we have to think about is providing some of the basic things for wildlife, like food, water, shelter, and space. We'll also be looking at some of the other sustainable practices that I've incorporated in my landscaping and things that I do that make it that much easier for wildlife to coexist with us. So let's go ahead and start taking our tour and we will start with food. In my neighborhood, there are some large, old oaks and maples. These trees provide a variety of different foods for animals that might make my backyard their home. Things like acorns and seeds, the twigs, leaves, bark, and other parts of the trees that I'm sure I can't even think of are all valuable resources for the birds, mammals, and invertebrates that I see very often in my space. Beyond trees, I have also planted a nice variety of native flowering plants, as well as provided some supplemental feeders. So let's continue to look at one of my garden spaces. This garden may not look like much right now at the beginning of its growing season, but there are many different types of native flowering plants in this bed. Plants like hairy mountain mint, echinacea, bee balm, Coreopsis and milkweed, to name a few, will explode into a variety of different colors and really pleasant smells that are great for a lot of different kinds of pollinators and birds. On the hairy mountain mint, I see a lot of different kinds of bees. On many of my nectar flowers, I see a large variety of butterflies like the swallowtail, monarch, and Painted Lady. Supplemental feeders are also helpful if you don't have a lot of space to add a variety of native plants helpful for birds to your garden, or if your plants haven't had a chance to grow up as much. Watching goldfinches is one of my favorite things to do. The male's bright yellow breeding plumage always catches my eye and I find myself stopping to watch the birds at the feeder more often than not when I'm in my home. Having a variety of bird feeders available can also help increase the diversity of birds that you see in your backyard habitat. Feeders like the green one that I have hold just a basic mix of seed, like millet and sunflower. You can also put up things like suet feeders, that would attract birds like woodpeckers and maybe even the occasional blue jay. Hummingbird feeders like the one I've placed next to my coral honeysuckle can be important resources for hummingbirds in early spring, especially if there aren't a lot of flowers that have bloomed yet for them. Winter can be a hard time for a lot of different animals to find food. And one way that we can make it easier is leaving up our native plants after they've died back for the season. Besides providing a multiple different kinds of food sources, having fresh water available for backyard wildlife is also important. In my yard right now, I just have a simple bird bath for most of my wildlife watering needs. I make sure to check this bird bath every day clean it out, and fill it with fresh water. You might be lucky enough to have a pond in your backyard. That would be something that I would love to add later. It's important to remember our invertebrate friends when we're thinking about water as well. This is a simple butterfly puddling station. All you need is a dish, a terracotta dish works really well, some rocks, sand, and of course water. 
There are many different ways to provide shelter for backyard wildlife, and one of the simplest things you can do is leave your leaves. Piles of leaves are a really great way to provide cover for a lot of different backyard wildlife animals. So this fall, think about moving your leaves to a part of your yard where you're not going to mow or mulch, or better yet, don't mow or mulch until next spring. Brush piles can be an incredible source of shelter for mammals, birds, reptiles, and invertebrates. My large trees are important in more ways than just providing food. They also provide a lot of opportunities for animals to make their nests to raise their young. In particular, my old silver maple on the side of my house has a few places where limbs have died and broken off. In these old hollow limbs, I see downy woodpeckers moving in and out to either store a cache or maybe take care of a little nest of young. Other cavity nesters like screech owls might make use of these spaces as well. Now since this tree is close to my house, my neighbors and I are keeping an eye on it, but as long as it stays sturdy and doesn't look like any limbs are going to fall off on my roof, it will stay. Dense shrubby areas like this coral honeysuckle vine that I showed you earlier makes for great habitat for nesting birds as well. I was delighted to find a cardinal's nest in this one. Now you may have noticed the structure on our window that looks a lot like an air conditioner. It's not an air conditioner, it's a catio. Our cat loves being outside and also loves watching the birds. And this is one way we make sure that she stays safe as well as protecting our native songbirds. Speaking of young, we all know babies need a lot of food. So let's take a closer look at the different kinds of trees that I have in my yard and see how they can provide some food for my backyard birds as well. I just planted a persimmon tree a few years ago. I'm looking forward to see it flower in the future and attract all kinds of interesting native bees like small carpenter bees, leaf cutter bees, and mason bees. I'm also hoping that my persimmon tree will be a good host for another favorite invertebrate species of mine, the luna moth. My pin oak tree is a host to a number of different kinds of butterflies and moths, but in particular it's host to a kind of butterfly called the hair streak. I also like looking at the leaves of my oak to see if maybe there might be some galls, some little bumps. That lets me know that things like wasps can make good use of this oak tree habitat as well. My shingle oak tree can be a really important species of tree for things like grasshoppers and walking sticks. With this variety of trees in my backyard and the number of insects that my native trees host, I know the birds that are making nests in my yard will have a lot of sources of food to feed their young. Now let's take a look at some of the other ways that I've made my yard sustainable and even friendlier for wildlife. Recently, I had a huge load of leaf mulch dropped off at my house. Mulching provides many benefits for your gardens. It helps the soil retain moisture so you don't have to water as often and can provide a lot of nutrients to your soil. It can be a great way to show your neighborhood that your yard doesn't have to go wild to support wildlife. I think especially in this corner of my front yard and my garden bed, the colors just pop against the leaf mulch and I can't wait until those flowers bloom and bring more color. Another practice I've been trying to incorporate more of in my backyard habitat is composting. I have a compost pile in the far back portion of my yard where I put a lot of my lawn clippings, but then I've also recently added this barrel composter to my yard where I can add more yard clippings as well as fruit and vegetable scraps from my garden. One of the easiest practices I've been able to incorporate in my yard is not using any kind of chemicals. That means I don't use any chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or herbicides. And because of that, my lawn is really diverse in plant life. 
Here we can see some grass, some clover, and some violets. Even the occasional dandelion makes its way in as well. Sometimes when I need a break, I might run my hands through my lawn to see if I can find any different kinds of invertebrates. Sometimes it's a small ant, sometimes it's a spider, other times it's a cricket, but today it doesn't look like I found much of anything. Fortunately for me, because I don't use any chemicals on my lawn, I can watch birds like this northern flicker look for invertebrates in the grass and hopefully do a better job of finding them than I do. I have incorporated a lot of the things off that checklist in my habitat already, but there is of course so much more I would like to do. But just like with any change, that takes time. Even by incorporating one or two of the things that I've shown you in my yard into your yard can make a big difference for our friendly neighborhood wildlife. So I hope you've been able to gain a little bit of inspiration or recognition that you're doing some of these things already. Now, that gray squirrel is reminding me that my backyard is its habitat too. So with that, I think it's time to find a quiet place to sit on my porch, maybe pour myself a glass of lemonade, and observe the beauty that is all around me in my backyard space. Bye.